Hey everybody and welcome back to Tens Motorsports. Today we're going to be doing some more Bevency products, a bunch of little tiny stuff that we're doing today, a mix of different upgrades to your E46s that tend to have issues. A lot of these are just a pull the old one off, put the new one on kind of thing, and then there is one that's a little bit more complicated. We're doing some adjustable sway bar end links. We'll talk about that one because that one's, like I said, a little bit more complicated. We'll talk about that one more in depth when we get to those but before we get into any of these make sure you are subscribed to the channel like if you enjoy this type of content also make sure to follow us on instagram tenza underscore motorsports we do giveaways and we pick winners from our follow list all you have to be doing is following us on instagram so let's jump over here to the bench real quick i'll go over some of the things that we'll be doing we'll show you how to replace them super simple but they're very 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 important we'll go over each of them right now So this is everything we'll be doing today. We've got some trunk release latches. We've got a bleeder screw replacement. We have an oil drain plug that's magnetic. We've got some replacement dipstick handles. We also have a replacement coolant cap. And then these right here are the sway bar end links. We're gonna go starting with uh, the simple thing first. So let's move all this out of the way. We'll go over some of the features, why we're doing it, and why you should be doing it as well. Just before I got these, I actually broke a plastic one. So I should have done this. I didn't realize they had them until after I had repurchased the plastic one, but the plastic ones tend to break in here. They'll basically uh, end up stripping out their threads. Not sure if you can see this, but there's actually teeth. And uh, this goes up against the side of the car in the driver footwell, and you'll pull it to release the latch. So we've got two of them. One's going in each car. So this one will go, the red will go into my race car. The silver will go into my wife's black car. So let's get those done real quick. Really simple process on these ones. Literally one screw and uh, we'll have these replaced. So here we are in the footwell of my white race car. This is the replacement. There's a new one I just recently purchased for the hood latch. I said trunk latch earlier, I think, but these are hood latches. This right here is a Phillips. Sometimes they're T20, 25, 27, but this one I make sure to put Phillips back in them just because they're a little bit easier for me to remember. But either way, all we're gonna be doing is pulling that screw out. This should slide straight out this way and then we'll put the new one on the exact same way this one came off. All right, it really is that easy. Let's see if it releases the hood. Yep, I can hear it. Um, my head's a little bit weird, so ignore the fact it doesn't roll back all the way. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. I don't have the carpet here, so it is a little bit wobbly on the two race cars, and I don't have to worry about this piece stripping out or going bad ever again. Coolant cap, really simple. The old ones, again, made out of plastic, they start to fail. Obviously, it's cool to have red, but it is nice to go to get a metal one. You don't have to worry about breaking it. I've actually cracked one of these before by having a tool in the engine bay fall over and land on this, and it's broken them before. Uh, the other thing that you want to look out for, even though your cap's in good condition, you want to look out for these gaskets here. If they're all flat, it is time to get a new cap. All right, now that we are in the engine bay using our new hood latch, we're gonna be replacing this and then the bleeder screw, which is just behind here. These don't exist in most cars, ignore that. That's for the Bevency oil cooler cap. Over to the RevMatch oil cooler, 
This guy right here we'll be pulling out in just a moment. First, we're gonna be doing the cap. As you can see here, I, I kind of wiped it up because it looked really bad in here and I, I was kind of embarrassed at first, but everybody has problems with their coolant in these cars. You can see that I got some splatter there, splatter there, and this whole area was kind of just had splatter on it. It's because this, the gaskets in this, have gone flat and are leaking. So we'll be putting the new Bevin C1 on. So you'll just pull this off, install. Doesn't get any easier than that. All right, next up is this little tiny guy right here. This is a bleeder screw for your coolant system. And oftentimes the coolant system will actually have uh, the flat blade or the Phillips style and they tend to strip out. They're made out of plastic. They wear out. Not a big deal. This is not a very expensive part. And one thing that I like a lot, let me see if we can get it zoomed in here. If you look really closely, it's actually more of a T style. So a torque bit instead of an Allen. I'm not a big fan of Allen stuff. They strip out all the time. The rotors on the E46s have made me not like Allens more than anything else. So I'm really happy that this is more of a torque bit. So really excited to get this one done. Super simple. Let's go replace it. The bleeder screw right here. We'll just be taking a Phillips. And then we'll slip the new one on. The new one is a T40 is what it looks like it's closest to. So you don't want to go too tight on this, just real nice and snug so it's not leaking out. And there is the bleeder screw replacement. Show me something real. Next up are the dipstick handles. Now, same as a lot of these other parts, they are replacing something that was made out of plastic. When you go and pull on your dipstick, sometimes it's seated pretty firmly and you can actually snap the handle off. These metal ones here, you don't have to worry about that anymore. These are pretty simple to do. You'll remove the old handle, slide it back in here, some set screws, and we'll go over a few ways on how to remove the old dipstick handle from the actual dipstick rod itself without damaging it. So the handle can be removed in a few different ways. You can take it to a belt sander and uh, remove all of the plastic as you're slowly spinning it. And then eventually this will just break out of there. You don't wanna damage the rod at all. The other way is taking a bench vise and squeezing it and then rotating it and squeezing it and rotating it and squeezing it and basically damaging the plastic enough that you can slip the rod out. I don't actually own a bench vise at my house yet. Time to get a little bit creative because I really do wanna see uh, one of these on there. I'm probably gonna take the blowtorch to it. It's not ideal, don't burn your house down, but I don't have a belt sander or a bench vise here. So I'm gonna get a little creative here, probably heat up the rod a little bit and uh, see if, if I can get the rod hot enough to loosen up the plastic, hopefully I can just spin it, roll it out. So I had to take this outside because doing this in the garage is probably not a good idea. And all I did was heat it up a little bit and then was able to slide this out. I did take a pair of pliers and grab a couple chunks off of it while it was warm. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bend that there is in it and I'm gonna just straighten that out. So now that I got this straight enough to slip into here, I can actually see but this is sitting exactly where the old ones sat. So now I'm gonna take the set screws. I'm going to run these in. So this is the only piece that I am not installing today. This is an oil drain plug with a magnetic end on it. What this does is it catches all sorts of shavings, metal shavings that are in your oil. 
And so you can kind of do a home inspection. You pull this out, all those shavings are stuck on the end. You can wipe them out onto a paper towel or something like that and get to see what exactly is going on inside your engine. If you see something on here that you don't like, then you can go further steps from there and figure out what exactly is going on with your engine. This is kind of a warning. So obviously you just remove your old one. You're ready to do an oil change and put this one in. We are not currently ready to do an oil change. It's the only reason why we're not installing this one today. Adjustable sway bar end links. These are really nice because if you've got coilovers like we do, you can actually change the angle of your sway bar. Not all coilovers have the attachment points in the exact same location. In fact, a lot of coilovers actually want you to get the shorter ones. These are essentially OEM length, roughly. Again, we're gonna be able to fine tune it by slowly twisting this in or out. We found out with our ECS tuning coilovers that we put on my wife's car that they actually want the longer ones. We put the shorter one on, changed the angle of the sway bar, and um, actually ended up rubbing a hole in the brake line. Basically, all we're gonna do while we're here on the bench is make sure that the distance uh, from this side to this side is the exact same so that when we start spinning the middle, it's moving them evenly and that you're not having a bigger gap here than here. That's the only thing you need to do before we put them on the car, a nylon locking nut with an Allen. And when we slip it on, you'll put the Allen to hold it in place and you'll run this nut on. So let's go and get these put onto the car. We're gonna be getting the car up. You need to have the car up off the ground on both sides. If you lift up just one side, you're actually twisting the sway bar and it'll be difficult to get one side in um, where these are adjustable. It could potentially wanna change lengths on you. So we're gonna jack up the front of the car. Here we have the wheel off. And looking back in here, you can see some of the problems that we're facing. You see the anti-roll bar, how it swings up. That should basically be level. So it should be closer to like down here. And we found out this issue because it actually rubbed on this brake line. And if you look at this bracket right here, we actually have that bracket swung down to avoid the sway bar end link. So I'm gonna tell you guys a little secret. I hate working on all this suspension stuff and recording because it's very difficult to get back here. But now that we've got this removed, and I'll show what that looks like here. These guys right here, if you're pulling off old ones, so ones that have been on your car for decades, these can be a huge pain in the butt. Oftentimes people don't tell you, you actually have to put a wrench on both sides. And sometimes there's an Allen key here that almost always strips out. So best way to get these off is to spray them with some um, rust tech PB blaster, some sort of lubricating oil to break that rust down. But we did get this off. There's the old one and it is too short. So let's get underneath here and I'll show you kind of what's going on. What we need to do is this bar needs to sit lower and then this whole chunk of crap needs to come up above it. And I've had to modify it to get it to fit because it was touching the brake line. So hold on just a second, let me get this. And then the end link is supposed to sit right there in between. It's kind of through the middle of all that crap. And I've loosened this so that I can move it around. Now that we've got it back roughly where it needs to sit, I'm going to put the new one on on this side and then we're going to match it. Make sure the other side looks the same. So here it is, it is still loose, but it is in there enough holding the sway bar. I'm gonna come over here to this side and I've been doing a little bit of reading and basically what you wanna have is this be level so that this is like a 10% or so uh, degree. It's actually the smallest setting on this part that makes it really easy to set up the other side to be the same. All right, here they are fully installed. Again, I apologize. Getting back in here with the camera absolutely sucks. There they are, that's how easy they are to install. You just replace the one that was in there, uh, put your sway bar to where you need it to sit, and then tighten everything up. This really only takes a little bit longer than the other projects, only because you've gotta jack up the car, make sure you're not on the suspension, take the wheel off. Other than that, uh, this is a 30 to 45 minute project. And uh, <laughs> with the car on the ground like this, if you're sitting on one of these roller stools, if you've got N15 fender vents, 
then you can see right into there and you don't even have to uh, duck your head down. It's actually harder for me to record looking at this than it is for me to look in there and uh, work on it. So if you have any comments or questions on any of the parts that we did today, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. Again, discount code right here. We'll also have it in the comments and in the description. We're really happy with everything. Here is the oil dipstick handle on my wife's car. I think it looks really good in there with the rest of the silver. Yeah, fantastic stuff. Bevin C's got a huge catalog, so make sure to check them out. I really appreciate everybody so much for watching. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bam!